Hi, y'all. Today is November 13, 2023. One more week before we get, we'll go on the Thanksgiving break. Hi, Atal. Atal wanted to be in my video today, so I hope you don't mind. Dennis and Alex in the back. Where's Alex? <laughs> He's hiding behind a little cupboard. Today we're reading a story from this, and then you have some questions. It's called The Save. What's the difference between talent and luck? It might depend on who you ask. I agree, there is a big difference between talent, talent and luck. Uh, part one, Oren, look at his name. He's a Native American. Oren shifted the stick from one hand to the other. Even with the mask on his face, his padding and his gloves, he was feeling naked. The goal behind him was six feet by six feet, but it seemed as big as a barn door now that he was the one guarding it. So I can already infer he's like the goalie, right? He's supposed to stop the balls from going in. In front of him were nine other, I can't say that word, Anandaga boys on the team. The And then if you look over on the right, it says the Onondaga Nation is one of the six Native American nations that make up the Iroquois, Iroquois Confederacy. It's located south of Syracuse, New York. So it's like a native tribe or something. Um, I lost my spot. <clears throat> oh, in front of him were nine other Onondaga boys on the team. Perry Elm, the third defender and closest, turned to look over his shoulder at Oren. No worries, Perry said. We got this. No one's getting past us. Oren nodded. He was actually on the same field with these guys in a real game. His heart should have been pumping with excitement. He was finally playing the position he'd practiced for for so long. But instead of being excited, he was terrified. Of course, he's scared. Why am I so upset? They were only ahead 14-2. Only two minutes left. No, they were ahead. So his team was winning, right? Nothing to worry about. Two minutes left. There's no way we could lose. That was why he, the third string goalkeeper, had been given a chance. A chance to look like a bum. The team they were playing, the Buffalo Bulls, actually wasn't that bad. But Oren's team was winning because they had a whole lot better. They were a whole lot better. After all, the Bulls were Buffalo, weren't Buffaloes at all. They were just city kids. He'd bet none of them had ever set foot on a lacrosse field before they hit middle school. How many of them had held their first stick before they could even walk? How many of them had a grandfather like his who was a legend at the game? And not one of those kids on the visiting team was Indian. We are Iroquois. We're proud. We are strong. That's how Joanne S. sang it on his mom's favorite CD. Now, I don't know anything about lacrosse. Do you guys? It looks like soccer, except instead of kicking the ball, it looks like you have to catch it and throw it to each other. It was a sort of corny song, but it usually inspired him. Iroquois, we're Iroquois, and everyone on our team is so much better than these guys, except me. And then look at on the left-hand side, how does he feel? How does he view his abilities? He doesn't have any self-confidence if he's like, except me, wah, wah, cry baby. Part two, Oren tried to concentrate, but for some reason his mind wandered back to when he was showing those Buffalo kids around. He'd been asked to, to be a tour guide. It was a way to make the third string kids feel more useful, he guessed. He almost laughed remembering the city boys when they were given the short tour, tour of the res before the game. The res is like short for reservation, like part of their land. The best moment came when they were taken up onto the hill to see the tribe's buffalo herd. Wow, one boy said, those are real. Another kid reached out to grab the fence. Do they ever get out of here? He sounded nervous. Yep, said Bill Jimerson, the keeper of the herd. He was leading this part of the tour, but only when they want to. That was when the buffalo, everyone on the res called Big Guy, the largest male in the herd, decided to show his sense of humor. He spun around and charged straight towards the crowd. To their credit, not all of the buffalo bulls ran or tripped over their feet as they tried to run away. 
As usual, big guy stomped inches away from the fence. He stopped. He was just tormenting them. Then he lowered his head so that Bill Jimerson could reach through the fence and scratch behind his horns. Wow, said a thing, long arm kid whose sweatshirt had a number 10 on it. He was shaking his head and smiling as he stepped back up to the fence. That is how to charge the goal. You bet, Master Sun, said the slightly shorter, shorter boy by his side. Like his friend, he'd stepped back but hadn't run for his life when Big Guy charged. The shorter boy's sweatshirt had a large number, seven. A whistle sounded, beep, beep, wake up. Um, it, they're, they're saying in the story that this is figurative language. Wake up, people. It's not that you're asleep. They're just trying to get your attention, right? Owen looked up at the field. The ball had been put back into play. Part three. There were actually a couple of pretty good players on the Buffalo team, number 10s and 7, the two kids who admired Big Guy. They scored the only goals, one each against Lee Elm, his team's second string goalie. Lee was good and would for sure be guarding the goal next year after Phil, the first string goalie, graduated. Number 10 and 7, both of them were now headed Oren's way, passing the ball back and forth between them. So I can infer the 10 and 7 are good if they if they scored past the first goalie and the second goalie. Oren is the third one. Be a Panther in the goal. That was his grandfather. That's that's how his grandfather put it to him. Oren crouched. He could feel his heart beating. A Panther. Be a Panther, he thought. Number 10 had the ball. Masterson, Oren remembered. That's his name. Everything was in slow motion now. Masterson was getting ready to make a shot. The ball was about to leave the webbing, just as number seven charged Oren. Oren tried to leap with the stick up to stop the shot, but as he did, his feet crossed. His legs tangled together at the exact moment when number seven ran into him. Oren flipped in midair and landed flat on his belly. He couldn't move. The wind had been knocked out of him like a piece of bubble wrap stomped on by a boot. I really am a bum, was all he could think. A whistle sounded. Game over. People were shouting, all right, what a move. They're praising that goal scored while I was belly flopping, Oren thought. Then he realized the voices were those of his teammates. And it was not just his own guys who had been impressed. Number 10 and 7 were leaning down on either side of him. Man, that was amazing. So what happened is he tripped accidentally, but they thought that he did this special move to protect the goal. It was an accident. You know what I mean? So now they think he's all like good. Man, that was amazing. Oren looked down at the stick in his left hand. There held in the webbing was the ball. So he stopped the goal, but he didn't mean to. Coach White was patting him on the shoulder. Oren, my man, you may take Phil's slot next season, the coach said. I should tell everyone it was an accident, Oren thought, but he didn't. Would you? I would. You would? I would. I would be like, I didn't even mean to do that. It was an accident. Y'all would lie? I would tell the truth. Yeah, I would say that too. I got lucky. Like, no, don't put me in next year. I'm not that good. Part four, my door is always open. That's what his grandfather always said to Oren, right? And on the left, it says, what does it tell you about his relationship to his grandfather? Our principal always says that my door is always open. Doesn't mean her door is always open. It could be shut. But what does that mean when somebody tells you that? Huh? Yeah, anytime you need to talk, come talk to me. That's what we say. My door is always open. And it was. When Oren got to his grandfather's cabin, the door wasn't locked, but his grandfather wasn't there. There was a note on the door. Gone to council meeting. Come in on the foods. Oh, come on in. Food's in the fridge. Oren pushed the door open and went straight to the fridge. He was sitting at the kitchen table, finishing off his fourth piece of fried chicken when his grandfather arrived. What is S-G-E? No. It's, what is that? I don't know what word that is. S-G-E, no, his grandfather said. It was the old greeting, a word that simply meant 
peace. Oh, maybe it's like Signo, something like that. Signo, Orin replied. Leave me any of that bird, his grandfather asked. He chuckled as he pulled up a chair. Not much, Orin said. No problem. Plenty more fire keepers. Are you still hungry? Orin nodded. These days he was always hungry, probably because of that growth spurt his mom said he was about to have. It couldn't come fast enough. Orin was tired of being half a head shorter than the other boys on the team. Ready? His grandfather said. I'm born ready, Orin replied. The two of them set off walking. Part five. It wasn't that far to fire keepers. I'm thinking it's a restaurant because the kid's still hungry, right? And he finished off the chicken. That's what they mean by bird. No more than a mile. It was a restaurant where everyone on the res liked to eat. They sat at the usual table, so usual that the waitress brought out the plate of fry bread, two bowls of buffalo chili, and two glasses of water without having to take their order. So I can infer their regulars, they always eat there and order the same thing. The food disappeared quickly. They sat there for a while in silence, looking out the open window to Orin's right. One of the Jemison boys was trying to start his three-wheeler. And that's a picture of a three-wheeler. They call them ATVs, right? All terrain vehicle. Never been on one, but they look like fun. You? They look like fun. Page 19. I wish I could have been at the game today rather than at the council meeting, his grandfather said. I heard you made a great play. Owen shook his head. No. His grandfather didn't say anything. He just looked at Owen, raising an eyebrow. Owen took a deep breath. Then he explained it all how it had been nothing more than a happy accident, how he felt like a fraud, how he shouldn't be getting any praise at all. His grandfather shook his head. I think it was more than that. I've watched you practice. You have good reflexes. Sometimes we can do things that surprise even ourselves. Plus, what's wrong with luck? Orrin stood up. He wasn't sure why. It was hard for him to sit and listen to his grandfather trying to make him believe he wasn't a loser. What happened next was hard for even Orrin to explain. There was a loud bang and a spurt of fire from the Jemison boys' ATV. Then something whizzed through the air towards them. Orrin found himself flying right over the table like a big cat. He knocked his grandfather to the floor. A piece of sharp metal spun over their heads. Gramps, are you okay? So he does have good reflexes. He just saved his grandpa. His grandfather smiled up, better, better than I would have if that thing had hit me. Suddenly, there were people all around him. You see what the boy did? I never saw anything like it. His grandfather held out a hand and let Horn, Orin help him up. Well, he chuckled. Naya we, grandson. Thank you. Remember what I said about having you having good reflexes? No way you're going to feel bad about this save. I guess so. Orin grinned. So the first save might have been an accident, but the second save wasn't. I'm glad he came clean. Not like you deceitful people. I would have come clean too. Um, now you have some questions on Schoology. We'll take a look at them together. Bye. That was a cute story.